assault. Few people dispute that large cuts in salt may benefit people with hypertension by anywhere from one to five points in blood pressure. This is about a third to a fifth of the drop they would normally get from standard hypertension medication. So even though salt reduction may lower blood pressure a bit, these folks would be doing much better with normal medication than through cutting salt. But what happens to everybody else when salt is restricted? All the new studies on the impact of sodium reduction show a rapid rise in plasma renin and the hormone aldosterone, which can lead to increased deaths in people with diabetes and heart disease. It can cause insulin resistance, which is a precursor to diabetes. It leads to loss of cognition, increased stress, dehydration, and poorer overall health. You see, it's not enough just to look at blood pressure. You have to look at the whole ball of wax, your overall health. Let me give you a few examples from real life. You're probably familiar with cholesterol. The Illuminate trials were established to increase high density, or HDL cholesterol, and decrease low density, or LDL cholesterol. These trials were suddenly halted because patients receiving the two-drug treatment had a higher death rate than those that were receiving only one in spite of the remarkable improvement in their cholesterol profile. So even though the cholesterol profile was great, the overall health outcomes were worse, and more patients died. And it's a good thing it was only a trial. Another similar combination drug study entitled Enhanced showed the same sort of result even though there was a benefit in LDL cholesterol reduction. The overall health outcomes were not improved. This is a good thing that that was only a trial. You see, if you only look for one result, such as blood pressure, and ignore all the others, more people might suffer. When people's lives are at stake, you can't afford to overlook anything. The ACCORD trials were established to address cardiovascular disease in people with type 2 diabetes. A key goal was to intensively control blood sugar compared to the standard treatment. And they did exactly that. However, they had to stop the trial because they found a 22% higher death rate in people who underwent the intensive treatment compared to the standard treatment. It's a good thing that was only a small trial, wasn't it? The drug Avandia was approved based on its ability to reduce blood glucose, but it was found to increase the number of heart attacks among patients taking it. As of November 2011, the U.S. government only allows it to be sold with a prescription after patients have been fully informed of the risks associated with its use. New Zealand has apparently withdrawn the drug. This was more than just a trial. The drug is estimated to have been associated with thousands of heart attacks in the United States alone. Hormone replacement therapy used to be a standard treatment for women with hot flashes and other menopausal symptoms. And it did work to relieve those symptoms. The use of this hormone therapy changed abruptly when the Women's Health Initiative clinical trial found that the treatment actually posed significantly more health risks than benefits, particularly when given to older postmenopausal women. This was not a trial. This was a broad recommendation that millions of women followed. Hormone replacement is no longer a broadly recommended therapy, and because it was so widely employed, it is difficult to calculate the cost to women's health that this therapy has resulted in. So you can't only look at one risk factor, such as blood pressure, in people with hypertension. You have to look at the overall health outcomes of everyone. Salt reduction will be imposed on the entire population, and we have never before in recorded history consumed the low levels of salt that are now being recommended. No one disputes that. So it is difficult to consider this anything other than a trial, just like any other drug trial except that it will involve more than 300 million Americans. That's right, it's you, your kids, your relatives, and your neighbors. 
that are going to be the lab rats. However, there's a big catch to broad intervention such as salt restriction. If the government gets it wrong, they won't be affecting just a few of us. With such broad interventions, you end up with the potential to cause a disaster of biblical proportions. When you go population-wide, you don't go only after the first-born son. You get the whole family. And that, my friends, is why it's so important to have a fully independent evaluation of all the consequences of salt reduction before we start meddling. Salt! <laughs>